Hey Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and today I am joined with the amazing Lionel Mitrelia. I can't pronounce your name properly, but Lionel used to be my um, office mate when I was working at ESA a few years ago. And he is an avid astronaut wannabe like me. <laughs> we both want to be astronauts. And ESA recently announced their uh, selection of their next astronaut program. I have released a video separately from this one on the selection criteria that ESA have announced. So go check that out if you haven't already. But in the meanwhile, I'm just going to let Lionel introduce himself because I know that I won't be able to do him justice. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. Really glad to be here. I'm really happy to to chat with you. It's been a while since we we last met in Madrid. Uh, we, we were together in the same office. That was really, really great. Um, yeah, so I'm Lionel Metraillet. I'm from Switzerland. I'm uh, 29 years old. And uh, yes, I really want to be an astronaut, as you as you know now. Um, so well, a little bit about myself. I did uh, physics studies. Um, I studied astrophysics and I did a little bit of space technology stuff also uh, as, a uh, as a minor aside my master in astrophysics. And, uh, and yeah, I worked at ESA for two years as a Swiss national uh, trainee. Uh, that's where I met Maggie. And, uh, and then uh, I came back to Switzerland and now I'm working in a, in a startup uh, also in the space industry. And I'm basically building uh, a spacecraft to go and grab space debris and remove space debris from uh, from low Earth orbit. So maybe you know about uh, Clear Space. You, you maybe heard of uh, this wonderful startup. We'll link it down yeah. below if people haven't heard of it. <laughs> Great, that's wonderful introduction. Um, so this is just going to be a really casual chat between us two, and hopefully it's going to be the first of many videos where we just casually talk about our own experiences through trying to get onto ESA's astronaut program. Um, so yeah, ESA announced uh, last Tuesday that they're selecting their astronauts. Um, how did you feel about that, like, Liana? <laughs> so yeah, well, as you know, we are preparing ourselves for that for the last, I don't know, two or three years at least. We know that uh, it was going to happen. Uh, we didn't know when. Uh, we first believe that it was end of 2020 yeah. and in the end it was uh, 2021 so we had to wait a little bit more but now uh, yeah i'm so excited and uh, yeah. and i was I, I would say more excited than than stressed uh it's it's yeah good excitement and i really want to to be part of this so i don't know about you but i i was i was so happy when they finally announced that it was going to be open on the 31st of march yeah like I think it w even before that, we kind of knew it was coming up, right? Because I don't know about you, but every year ESA like publish a calendar of big events. And one of those things on the calendar was that they were going to have this astronaut yeah. selection. And that already got my heart pumping a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then just like finding out that they were going to do this announcement on Tuesday, I was super excited but also super nervous and i'm still super nervous now i don't know why <laughs> why i think it's just because i've been waiting all my life for this so it's just like okay. it's actually finally happening now and it's so scary as well because this is pretty much once in a lifetime opportunity right because well, the past sure. ones well the past we, ones we... were about 10 years apart so the next one i'll be 40 <laughs> you'll be younger <laughs> So you I can still have another go. That's something they said in the French version of the uh, announcement. I guess we're going to talk about this later. But that, that's something they said in the French version that they want to do more, uh, like they want to do the selection more often, and that that they will amazing. not wait. They will not wait ten years, for sure. They they said it good. in the in the French um, uh, in the French press conference. But I guess. It's going to be difficult to have it more than that, right? Because like um, some astronauts, they wait forever just to go up, right? Some have like been training many years and then they, they're just waiting. Some don't even get to go up. 
like even well, on the like the NASA astronauts I'm talking about, like they they get selected, but some never ever actually go into space. NASA astronauts, yeah. Uh, I mean, they are selecting. I don't know every two to three years they are selecting twenty of them or ten of them. I don't remember. I don't know exactly the numbers, uh, but it's it's quite a lot with respect to uh, ESA. But all the ESA astronauts, they want to um, to fly them at least two times in their yeah. life. So, so that's why they, they, they need maybe less people. Uh, but they expect that the number of flight will be will increase in the next uh, years. So that's why they want more people okay. now. And I'm just looking at the lists now. And so they did the selection in 2009 and the first who flew from this selection was Luca Parmitano in 2013. So it was like four years later, four years yeah. uh, after the end of the selection. Like the last one to fly was uh, Thomas Pesquet. Yeah, Thomas Pesquet, and he flew in 2016. So in less than seven years, everyone flew at least once, which is good. Yeah. So yeah, but but I mean, that means like seven years to get through your first class of astronauts. So it seems a bit weird that they would have an, a, a shorter selection period if they haven't gone through the first set of astronauts yet. True, I mean? but they want, they, they, they want an overlap between the uh, okay. uh, experienced astronauts and the new astronauts. And of course, it's because of uh, knowledge. They want to transfer the knowledge from the more experienced yeah. astronauts to the younger ones. There's nothing better than speaking with uh, an experienced astronaut to know better the things and to know how to do things. So let's go back to the Easter announcement because we're like sidetracking a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so we were both super excited about it. I was more nervous, you were more excited. Um, let's have a talk about the different people. So I'm talking about the UK one because I've only seen the UK announcement but uh, Lionel, you've seen the French and the British one, right? When you say UK, you say you say the English version. <laughs> not, not well, UK the French. Well, the French one was the French one was in French, right? So. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the French version and the the English version, I guess. On the English version, who did we have on the panel? So in the top left, we have Ninja Menning. I don't know if you've come across her before. No, no, no. So I've come across her before, and she's the head of ESA Newsroom. So she's involved in all of the media stuff. So I did quite a bit of media for ESA, and that's where yeah. I came across her before. Ah, okay. She's a lovely lady. Exactly top middle, Jan Vorna. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we all know him. <laughs> was you surprised to see him on there? Uh, actually, no, I was not. I think he needed to be there. Uh, yeah. Well, he, he didn't talk much, but he did exactly what he needed to do. And, and that's perfect. I mean, I think when I was working at ESA, everyone loved him. He was great. And, uh, yeah. and I'm quite a bit sad that he's leaving, honestly. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see who, who will uh, replace him. I don't think, think it's it's public no, no, it, it now. It is, it is. It's uh, Josef Ashbacher. I, I'm, I'm oh, probably yes. pronouncing that wrong. True. So That's true. Josef is the head of Ezrin at the moment, Earth Observation, okay. and he's taking over in July. Um, so I, I was kind of expecting, if anyone, to see Josef. Because at the end of the astronaut selection, the final round is an interview with the director general. OK, so top right, we have Tim Peake, first British astronaut, apart from Helen Sherman, <laughs> first ESA UK astronaut. Have you, have you ever met Tim Peake? I think I did in, when, where was it? I think it was in Bremen, He maybe, I don't remember now. If he came to the uh, International Astronautical Congress, when I was in Bremen uh, three years ago, two years, three years ago, um, I think he came. He was on stage, so I, 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 I never had met him like in person, like discussing with him. But yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, I was trying to organize him a trip to ESAC like several times, but I think he was just trying to be polite and then just not come. <laughs> He kept Too saying, bad. oh, not this month, maybe next month. And next month I would email him and he'd be like, oh, not this month. <laughs> maybe I, should, next. I should have tried this with Thomas Pesquet. 
<laughs> you should have. Left middle, we have uh, Frank Devine. Is that how you say his name? Uh, Frank, Frank Devine. And then we had David Parker on the middle right. Um, he used to be the head of the UK Space Agency, but now he leads the, he's the director of human and robotics. And then uh, Samantha Cristofetti. Cristoforetti. Cristoforetti. <laughs> you, you have to say it with the uh, Italian accent. Oh, I, I can't say any accents. <laughs> British accent. Samantha Cristoforetti. She's always so bubbly. <laughs> Do you know that she speaks 10 different languages? Yeah, and she's like she... fluent in them. Yes, yeah, that's amazing. That, that like shocks me. Um, and, and, and by the way, she's she's the only one who has only uh, flown once. Uh, well, Thomas will f will fly in April of this year. Okay. Uh, and so she's the only one who has flown only once uh, from this selection. Oh, OK. Will she fly again? I guess she will, because they said that they want everyone, every astronaut to fly two times. So I guess she will fly in 2022. Because in autumn 2021, it will be uh, Matthias Maurer. And Matthias Maurer, technically, he's not from the 2008 selection, uh, but from later on. He joined yeah. the selection, uh, the, the astronaut group later on. So, yeah. So it will be his first flight in autumn. So in the bottom middle, we have Jennifer Noan. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as well. And you've met Jennifer before, right? Did I? I don't think uh, so. She came to she, she she comes to SSW every year. Then I don't remember her. <laughs> uh, I think the last talk that she gave was on the gateway, the lunar mm. gateway. Um, so she always talks about what they're doing on the human exploration and robotics side of things. Yeah, that's her department. Well, honestly, we are we are meeting so many people in in ESA that uh, we cannot recall all of them. Yes, you you can. Everyone's so nice and everyone's so different. <laughs> true, true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I get starstruck by like people and at ESA because they're all just like so amazing. They work on so many different amazing things. Yeah. You can, you kind of get jealous of everyone, right? Because they just work on the best. That's <laughs> the true. That's true. That, that, they are seeing so many people that are so interesting, and and they know so much, and they have to know so much. <laughs> that's that's yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I really want to know more people from uh, EAC uh, and and the people who are working with the astronauts also. If well, I cannot be an astronaut, I would like to work with astronauts because they know so many things and that's great. You remember that time we had Andrea come to my office like, yes. about visiting from EAC and she actually used to work as, I think she was a miner, works in mines in Australia ah. before she became like um, controller um, on the ISS. Yeah, Instance. so she she came from something completely different and just like moved into that career. Mm -hmm. so. Where is she from? She's she's from Australia. Okay. Yeah, and she managed she, to have she managed to have a, a contract in, at ESA. Yeah, she um, she's Italian. She's got ah. Italian citizenship. Yeah, she helped start the Australian Space Agency because there wasn't one until she decided. Okay, we really need a space agency there. Okay, so. Um, Back on these people, do you think we're, we're going to see more of these these panelists in the future? Well, Samantha, Tim, uh, they will for sure be involved actively in selecting the new astronauts. Maybe not in the first steps, of course, but uh, later on when when we will have interviews, when 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 the the, the new astronauts will have to be uh, 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 yeah interviewed and and to know how they behave and how they they uh, they they want to be well yeah they, they they will they will have to be there for the for the interviews of course yeah. it, it will it will also be a nice way to see how the future candidates will be will handle the the the, the excitement to see and to talk with uh, uh, Tim and Samantha in front of them uh, answer their questions uh, I think it's going to be very interesting psychologically speaking also. <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone's just going to be starstruck and just be like, <laughs> won't know what to say. But actually, like, 
I, I, I speak quite casually with Tim Peake, so it's going to be weird. Look at you. <laughs> I like I, I, because I've met so many of these people. It's it feels like very strange. Like if I if they were to interview me, I knew I know them, right? Okay. So it's that's, difficult that's good, to take things good thing seriously. For you. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing because I you will not be nervous I will still be nervous because I I guess there's more room to mess up right because <laughs> it's like oh these people know you and you still manage to mess up <laughs> that would be terrible uh, maybe if they know you you would there will be uh, I don't know how to say that in English actually indulgent in French uh, there will they will let it go. I mean, if, yeah. if they really know you and they know that you are just nervous and, and you're not saying exactly what you are or, or, or who you are, uh, I think they will. They might let it go if they know you. So that, that I had that same feeling during my interview for um, the Easter Research Fellowship, actually, because Bruno Altieri, who was my mentor, he was in my um, my inter he was one of my interviewers. And I actually knew him because he was a collaborator of mine for the entire of my PhD. So like four years beforehand, I already knew him. And then I had to do an interview in front of him. And I was just really worried that I would mess up because like then he would just think I'm an idiot and we have to collaborate together still after this. <laughs> but, you know, the interview is what really brings out like if this person is competent or not. So... True. H have you ever failed an interview, though? I cannot picture you failing an interview. <laughs> yeah, of course I have. Failed loads. <laughs> well, I think I everyone failing... does. It's it's all like it's all about look, though, right? A lot yeah. of it is just look. Even but... the ESA Research Fellowship um, interview I thought went really bad. Like every interview I feel goes bad, but it just okay. I don't know why. Well. <laughs> I, can, I, I cannot believe you but okay <laughs> yeah in my ESA research fellow interview they asked me like okay talk us through the steps to send a telescope into space and I talked them through it all but I forgot that you need an antenna on board to communicate back to earth <laughs> <laughs> and then like we were talking all the way through it and then the, and they were like okay so how are you going to get your data and I was like oh well it just beams back to earth and they're like okay but what what did you need on that I was like oh <laughs> an antenna <laughs> an antenna <laughs> okay so um you saw the French announcement yes right as well as the English one yes so the, all the different languages ones, they all had different people involved, right? They, they weren't the same um, well, set of panelists. Apparently, well, at least between the English and the French version, they always had a few astronauts, a few people from HR, people from the diversity team, people from the EAC. So they tried to have almost the same uh, uh, group of people uh, in front of, in front of, the, of the press. Uh, so they could answer all the questions, basically. Um, I was really impressed by that the diversity of the panel because they managed yes. to get like a good number of women. Was it the same in the French one? Yes, exactly the same. That's really yeah, yeah. good. They had uh, one, two. I'm just reading my notes. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, three women and uh, three men, basically. Okay. Three women, That's three really men. Good. Yeah. So who did they have on there? They had um, former astronauts, uh, Kness and ESA astronaut Claudie Aignoret, uh, so a French uh, astronaut. They had also uh, Ercilia, v uh, I don't know if I will say that correctly, but pronounce that correctly, but Ercilia Vodos Carpeta. Yeah. Uh, she was a representative of the uh, diversity group uh, working at ESA. Uh, we and had... you met her, right? Nope. No, no, no. You, you didn't? No. No, I've invited, I, she's come to ESAC t twice under my invite. Ah. And, yeah. Oh, was she the, the, okay, no, I think I remember. She did. She gave uh, a talk about diversity. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, I, I see now. That's why I thought I knew her when I saw her on, on, on screen. Okay. Yeah, she's um, lovely, really, really lovely. 
and she didn't used to be diversity she used to work somewhere she's worked like like in all departments of ESA like everyone knows her um, uh, fortunately I don't know a lot of them I, I I haven't well I haven't been involved with either diversity groups or uh, um, human and robotic exploration or anything like this because for me the dream to be an astronaut was well, I had this dream for a long time. I still had this dream uh, uh, since uh, I don't know. Yeah, when I was uh, I don't know eight or or seven years old. Um, but but I haven't done much in this direction. So I haven't met a lot of people uh, around the astronauts and around the the selection of the astronauts. So you, you did way more than me. <laughs> I think I did at the start of my career before because like. When, when I went to university, I studied uh, astronomy, space science and uh, astrophysics. And specifically because I wanted to be an astronaut and I just tried to get involved as in as many space activities as possible. So I, I worked with the British Interplanetary Society and the UK um, SAD Students for Exploration of Space. Um, and we did a lot of things with the UK Space Agency because they were quite small at the time. It was just like beginning that like at the start, there was like only a handful of people working there. So we helped them with loads of events and stuff. So okay. I got very close with the space community in the UK, I think, yeah. that way. That, that's but, a very good point for you. That's but I, I don't I don't do that anymore. Like I, like I lost ties with all of that community. Just being focused on my PhD. Well, well maybe yeah. there's there's one guy uh, who I actually uh, uh, talk with. Uh, it's uh, Claude Nicolier, uh, the only Swiss astronaut. Yeah. I was. Uh, we were basically colleague uh, for the two years I was in Madrid because when I was in Madrid, I was employed by the Swiss Space Center. He is, and and he was at that point also employed by the Swiss Space Center. So we were colleagues, and we had like. Um, I think it was a dinner. Yeah, we had a, the Christmas dinner all together, uh, a Christmas oh, lunch all together, uh, and it was really nice. I, I managed to to be uh, close to him and to discuss with him the whole di the, the whole lunch. It was uh, it was a very nice experience, and he also came a few times to uh, my presentations. So every time I went to the International Astronautical Congress, he was there because he's passionate about this and he's going every time. To see the, the 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 people talking and the other the other astronauts, uh, basically uh, his friends, and uh, and he came to every talk I've done in the last years uh, at the International oh, wow. Astronaut Congress. So uh, that was really nice to have him in the in the audience and and yeah. and to discuss with him uh, afterwards. I think my biggest regret was not communicating uh, much with. Um... Pedro Duque, yes, because he like uh, he's eats in our canteen and stuff. But uh, we, I guess, I don't know about you, but I never like really got the chance to speak much with him. No, me neither. So I got told that he likes to eat lunch alone, so he just sits there by himself. And I emailed him a couple of times saying, "Hey, can I join you for lunch? I want to ask you about astronaut things." And he just like ignored me, so it made nah. me sad. Yeah. <laughs> He'd rather eat alone than eat with me. In the English astronaut announcement, they told us that they want four to six astronauts. Yeah. These would be career astronauts employed by ESA and an additional 20 uh, reserve astronauts. And these would be a one-time flight uh, for a specific mission. They would be um, contractors. So you would keep your day-to-day um, -day job and then um, come do one mission with ESA and then go back to your job, presumably. I was really surprised by this yes, because, I, yeah, I was expecting four to six astronauts, but I wasn't expecting the additional 20. Yes, I was not expecting the additional 20. And honestly, I was not expecting that they would say six. I was yeah. expecting four only. And then they said maybe six and 20 more. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And that they're also one of them will be a para astronaut, right? Do, do you think they want to hire only one candidate? Yes. So it would be one of the reserve astronauts will be okay. specifically a para astronaut, so like para Olympics. But person. I thought I thought they wanted more than one. Mm, no, two? it's just one. Okay. I think they say that, and it's kind of like misleading because it's not all disabilities that's allowed, is it? 
No, not all of them. Uh, only uh, two specific ones. Yeah, it's either like you've got a prosthetic lower limb, so prosthetic foot. Below um, the knee. Like um, if you've got one leg shorter than the other, or yeah. you're very or short, so less than 130 centimeters. Which which kind of makes sense because you still need to have quite strong upper body to yeah. to do the EVAs or to do whatever other uh, duty you have to do on, on onto the on the ASAS. So I think the lower limbs are the less useful limbs <laughs> to be an astronaut. So yeah. so I think it makes sense. It makes total, total sense for me. I think for me it was kind of surprising about the um the shortness and also the difference in leg heights because in olden times i don't know how olden times is olden but like in the past when they chose astronauts they had to be a specific height and have a specific leg length so they could reach the pedals on like spacecraft i don't think they had pedals on spacecrafts maybe on on, on the Mercury. Um, I can't remember which hands. one because this is what uh, my one of our colleagues said. He had one okay. leg shorter than the other, and they failed him because he couldn't fit into one capsule. But I can't remember what that capsule's name is now. Well, it's only Soyuz, no? No. So, so in 1991, they had an additional constraint that you had to fit into the seat of a Hermes space plane. Oh, the Hermes. And you had to. I had to reach the pedals on that. Yeah, Hermes was the um, the only shuttle uh, to transport humans from and from Earth and to to, to space and back uh, safely uh, from spaceport Kourou, um, so from, from Guyana, French Guyana. So it was the only the only plan to to send humans uh, by the Europe Europeans. <laughs> But his leg was only one centimeter short on one side, and they failed him on that. Oh no! Okay. So, yeah, that was crazy. And I, I know, like the height restrictions in general, they like to keep you small enough to fit into a Soyuz, but like tall yeah. enough for other reasons as well. Um, so I was kind of surprised, like the requirements for the para astronaut. Because they would have to design specific seats for them, right? And but anyway, anyway, all seats are, uh, are are designed specifically for the astronaut that is sitting in the seat. So they okay. are they, they are uh, perfectly fitted to your body. Anyway, so regardless they, if you're short. Yes, you, you need that because otherwise you cannot withstand the, the G's properly. Yeah. Was there any significant differences between the French and the UK announcements? Yeah, as I said before, uh, they will actually do uh, more frequent selections, and yes. that's the thing they they haven't tell they haven't told us in the English version and the French version. It was uh, following a, a question from a, from a, from a journalist, and uh, and they said, yeah, we are going to do more frequent selections. So definitely, they they don't want to wait more than uh, than ten years to do the the, the selections. So that we will have really more good. opportunities. But that means that also means that they're going to do more frequent flights, which is going to be really yes, good. That's that's what they said. Uh, ISS at least until 2030s. So the people um, that are uh, that will be selected uh, next year, so during this selection, they will fly before the end of the 30s, uh, before the end of the 20s. So for sure, they will fly to the ISS, and then we will have the gateway. Uh, ISA has uh, has has bought. I think I think they bought already three seats um, oh, wow. to go to the uh, to the gateway. Uh, Do you want to explain this... what the gateway is in case people watch? Yeah, so the gateway is, is the um, uh, space station that will be in a cislunar orbit, uh, so it will be around the moon, and it will be the the basically the the gateway to go from Earth to uh, the moon and on the surface of the moon. So the first missions will be uh, uh, basically going to the gateway, uh, going around the moon, and then come back uh, to Earth. And maybe in the early 30s or late 20s, we will go actually on the surface of the moon for uh, for for good, 
uh, not only just for one trip, but for good, we will stay there. And, and the gateway will be the link between the surface of the moon and Earth. Uh, and, and, and ESA is well involved in this. They, they will build at least two modules for, uh, for the gateway. And uh, they are building also the um, service module of the Orion spacecraft. So the Orion capsule is going to be the capsule who will bring the astronauts from Earth to the gateway. And, uh, and ESA is building the, uh, the service module and the, all the life support equipment for the, uh, for the capsule. So that's how they actually buy the seat. They, they okay. are actively uh, developing things and, and creating new technologies uh, to, for the gateway. So for everyone who is going there, so the Americans too, obviously. And, uh, and that's how they get the seats from the Americans to fly on the SLS and Orion. Have any other countries bought seats? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, that would be good. <laughs> so, was there any other differences? Uh, yes. When I looked at the English version, they said straight away six astronauts plus 20. Mm -hmm. And in the French version, they said four astronauts. They didn't talk about the 20 others. They, oh, really? They just they, they stick to the four astronauts, and I said uh, when I was looking, uh, I looked at the replay of the French version. I first looked at the English version uh, yeah. live, and then a couple of days later, I, I, I looked at the French version. I said, "But why? What, what's happening? They are talking about four astronauts and not six, and not about the twenty more." So, so I, I, I didn't understand. And then a journalist uh, said, "Okay, but how many people can we expect to be selected for the for the the whole process of the of the astronauts uh, class?" And, and then they said, OK, actually, it's not four per se. It might be a bit more, up to six. And actually, something that we didn't say, oh, we will have 20 other astronauts for the reserve astronaut uh, class. And that's that was OK. They said it pretty late in the in the press conference. Did they talk uh, about how many people they expect to apply? Well, they not really. They said a lot. They yeah. again. They said the eight thousand uh, um, applicants uh, to the two thousand and eight class, and they said we expect this number or more. I think it's going to be much, much more. Uh, I think we can expect around fifty thousand. Yeah. Across Europe. Yeah. Do you, Do you think there's fifty thousand people with master's degrees and three years of working experience? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe among the fifty thousand, we will have only ten thousand with this uh, uh, requirements uh, fulfilled. I don't know, but uh, but I, well, a lot of people <laughs> will 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 apply for sure. Yeah, I think like the social media sphere has gone crazy about this. Everyone knows about it. So I bet there will be a lot of applications. If if I'm not mistaken, in two thousand and eight, Isa had no YouTube or uh, or Facebook uh, page, so. <laughs> They did For sure, they, they couldn't do uh, any advertisement on that. I, I think it was advertised in a newspaper, though. Yeah. Not, um... Yeah, they did press conference, uh, press, yeah. Con uh, press conferences and press releases, but uh, they couldn't they couldn't reach to the whole public uh, through the yeah. through the media, uh, social media. Definitely. Um, how how many people are getting through the next round? I don't know if you looked at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's also a, an interesting topic. Um, so they expect to select, down select from these, uh, I don't know how many thousands of people who will apply through uh, through the career uh, website, is a website. Uh, they want to down select, I think, around 1,000, 1,500 people um, uh, to go to uh, to the next step. And the next step will be the psychotechnic tests. Yeah. Uh, and this is going to be Great. I'm, I'm actually looking <laughs> forward to that. I, th that's Honestly, that's my goal. I, I, I know I have a very slight chance to be an astronaut in, in the end, and I, I just want to do this because I don't want to regret it. I just want to yes. apply because I don't want to regret it and saying, oh, I should have tried. And, and my goal is to go through this first step and to go to Hamburg. Uh, they, they said in the French version of the, the press conference, they said it was going to be in Hamburg. Uh, the first uh, test from July to, to September uh, 2021. So I really hope to go there. That's that's my main goal. If I pass the first one and I go there, I would be really happy. <laughs> Just giving it a shot, you won't regret it. And yeah. 
that's the best you can do. Um, so the deadline to apply is um, end of May. 28th of May, yeah. Yes. Um, and it opens on the 31st of March, the end of March opening. So we've got two months essentially yeah. to apply. Do you think that's enough time? I think it's enough time because now, now that they announced it, we, we have, wait, well, one month and a half to prepare the the our our things. So basically, the medical exam uh, exam that we have to take, the the medical certificate that we have to uh, to show, and and I mean, okay, training. You can train. You can do whatever sport you want to train. You can uh, train uh, your your brain to to do math or uh, or or to well all the psychotechnic tests. Uh, but I think I think two months is is more than enough. Honestly, I've been waiting for this event all my life. <laughs> I've just literally been waiting for the astronauts elections to open. And I've been training for like this moment. Like I used to go to the gym every single day, but then lockdown happened and that's just kind of derailed me for the past year. And for me, it was so, the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get back on track, but <laughs> we will get there. <laughs> Um, yes. What made you want to be an astronaut? Oh, wow, so many things. Oh, uh, where do I begin? Uh, well, okay, first of all, we, we all know that astronauts is a cool job, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so cool to be up there. Uh, I mean, to, to watch the Earth, to, to have this um, overview effect, the, the, the overview effect that all the astronauts are talking about. I think it's, it's yeah, I want to live this. So to to see the Earth, to feel that the Earth is so fragile, so tiny, and and we need to protect the the Earth. So, so the overview effect is the thing that I want to feel. Uh, so this is maybe more personal reason to be an astronaut, uh, of course. Uh, and the and going, yeah, it goes with the overview effects. But I think the EVAs. I just I just want to to do an EVA, to do an extravehicular uh, activity, just to go outside of the ISS and to to look at the Earth. Uh, I think it's going to be that uh... like terrifies me actually. <laughs> I've never done skydiving, but I've done um, actual diving. Yeah, <laughs> true. And the experience of diving is amazing. It's like a whole another world, yeah. and you're only reliant on the tank on your back, um, which always scares me at the start. But once I'm under, I love it. But like before, like, you know, preparing, putting on your wetsuit, putting on, checking all your like uh, valves and stuff on your yep. tank, that always scares me because it's like, what if I go down here and this like doesn't work? What if I can't breathe? And I mean, you, I know. you know that it's a risky uh, activity to go to dive yes. and to be an astronaut. It's, it's a risky activity. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. But in space, there's no one to save you, really. You're yeah. kind of on your own. <laughs> Uh, Luca, Luca um, had uh, had a, a pretty bad experience. A leak. Uh, yes, a leak in his suit. He almost drowned. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was that yeah. was not funny at all. But they managed to 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 get him back inside the station and uh, in time. And that was that, they actually did all the. Uh, I think they they finished all the activities they had to do uh, during that EVA. So you have yeah. procedures and you know that you have other people to help you. Still, at least sure. one one other. Uh, uh, person to help you outside, but yeah, it's it's scary. But anyway, I want to see I, I want to see the Earth from the outside of the EIS. That 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 is excellent. I, I really want to see that. And Do you have a maybe, defining moment of when you thought I'm definitely want to go for being a national? I'm definitely going to take this seriously. I think it happened not long ago. It was when I was in Madrid. Uh, it was, uh, I was discussing with a lot of different people, with you, with uh, friends that I had there, other trainees, and I don't know why, at some point they started to to say that I, I could be an astronaut, I don't know why, uh, maybe I was starting to talk about it somehow, and, uh, and I said, well, I was always saying, okay, but it's a dream, it's not possible, I'm not fit enough, I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm not uh, suited for that. I, I don't have the, the, the knowledge for that. You know, I passed the threshold uh, uh, and I had enough confidence. And then I said, OK, I have to try. And, and now I'm, yeah, it's been two years that I'm waiting for this, at least two years, three years, two years and a half that I'm waiting for this uh, uh, selection to open. Okay. I mean, being an astronaut is so great. 
I, besides, besides the personal things I just said, so to the overview effect and to see the earth and whatever, it's also yeah. the fact that I, I'm so curious anyway, and, and the astronauts are doing so many things on so many different subjects, and you have to learn so many different things. And, and to have this broad knowledge uh, is, I think, the best thing to have. And, and, and that's something I'm, I'm focusing on, to have as broad knowledge as I can. And, and I think the astronaut, the, the job of being an astronaut is the best one to, to, to have that, because you have to, to master a bit of uh, uh, um, uh, biology, you do uh, uh, medical uh, um, tests on, on board the ISS, you do physics, you do astrophysics, you do, uh, um, yeah, all these kind of experiments you have on the ISS. I cannot name them all, but uh, it's, it's great. I love this. And yeah. you help people on Earth by doing that because you're developing new technologies, you're developing new new ways of treating uh, new drugs, new new way of treating people on ground. And and it's not only for me to be an astronaut that I that I'm interested in, but also because the astronauts are helping people on ground without them knowing, of course, a lot of people, they don't know that pe that astronauts are helping them uh, yeah. by developing new new techniques and new technologies. But that's that's what I, I'm interested in. And, and the astronauts are inspiring. So when, when astronauts are going back to Earth and they do these uh, presentations and they go in schools and they go in classrooms in, in, in different countries and seeing a lot of people, and I love that. I, I think I would like to, to go around Europe and just talk to everyone uh, to, to, to encourage everyone to be an astronaut and to do uh, science or whatever. <laughs> Well, so, not everyone can be an astronaut, but no, hopefully that's... you'd inspire the next astronaut. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to yeah, do that. Yeah, that would Definitely. be great. Yeah, me too. I think I've I've always just wanted to float in space because like, I just look in the universe. It's so large. Like yeah. I I just want to travel up there. Like that's that's always been the thing that's been most important to me is to go into space. At school, we... We have a um, National Space Center in Leicester. It's about maybe 30 minutes drive from my home. And at school, we used to visit that quite often. And I think that sparked a lot of the interest in me yeah. to study space and astronomy. Um, but I think the defining moment for me to like actually pursue a career um, in space and actually want to apply to be an astronaut was um, when I was in sixth form, um, so I would have been 16 years old, and my science teacher, who I absolutely looked up to, she said that like she could imagine me as the first ever pink astronaut in space. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. at the time, I loved fashion and pink, and so that, that was, that's what she said, I would be the perfect job for me, or designing that pink astronaut suit. And like, I think that was the moment that I, my role model became Darvin Newman. She was the deputy administrator at NASA. And she, like her career was just designing spacesuits. So that has been like, I just think it's so cool. Like spacesuits, they're essentially a spacecraft, but a mobile one. Like it keeps yeah. people alive in space yeah. and transports you around. What's her name again? Darvin Newman. Yes, I've seen her. I've seen her last uh, last year in Washington DC when I again the International Astronomical Congress. Um, uh, I've seen her there. No, was it or was it in Bremen? No, I don't remember. I think no, it was in Bremen. It was in Bremen, and that was that was really really interesting. She is so talented. She is so, an so incredible good. speaker. She she has a way to speak and to and to tell what she, what she's doing and her experience in a way that is so easy to understand and so so passionate it's it's incredible i i was amazed by this woman I, i've never met her or seen her in person um but i know that she knows of me because i was in a tv show once and they talked to her and and they mentioned my name and she said oh i know her okay <laughs> so she <laughs> knows of me but <laughs> um yeah, she's yeah so that was the defining moment for me i was just set then on becoming an astronaut but it's always been a waiting game and I like I've always thought like 
I was always worried that the application like would open before I turned 27 and I wouldn't make the cut a bit ah, too yeah. long and then thankfully it was after but like um every year then I've been like okay I'm old enough now come on <laughs> let's have this selection it's open already it. <laughs> well you you've seen that now they haven't told anything about the lower boundary on the on the on the age so we don't they have a minimum age they don't have a minimum but they still have the requirement of a master's and then three yeah. years work experience yes. so that's like, you can't make it before 25 unless you're a super genius and go to university like yes super early indeed uh but yeah they they haven't said it uh well they haven't given a, a very very stringent uh, uh lower limit lower limit yeah I was surprised about the upper limit of 50. I was also surprised and and they discussed about it in the French uh, version, in the French uh, press conference. And they said, OK, basically, we want everyone to fly twice. Mm -hmm. So if we imagine uh, uh, someone who is 50 uh, getting in the astronaut corps, then maybe they will uh, they will just fly OK twice. but just before reaching the 65 years uh, uh, old to, to get retired. So it's, we, we have, we need 15 years to fly people twice. Basically, that's what they said. <laughs> so but like, who was it? Um, I can't remember who it was now. And they, they flew like really, like when they were really old. I, th I think the oldest is 70 something, no? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He was 70, like John Glenn, wasn't it? Was it John Glenn? No, it was it was John Glenn. Oh, John Glenn, 77. 77. Wow. <laughs> like, can you imagine awesome. like doing anything at 77? I like, I'd be bound to a wheelchair probably. <laughs> no, you were not. But uh, but being in a, in a, in the shuttle, I think he flew in a, on the shuttle. Then. Yeah. 77 years old. That's incredible. I would that love is. it. <laughs> Do, can you imagine if you if if we are if one of us or both of us are uh, taken for this uh, astronaut selection during this astronaut selection, we would fly maybe in at, at even if we fly at 60 years old, we might fly <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can imagine that. <laughs> no, we will go. We will go on Mars first. Yeah. First off, we will go on Mars at some point. <laughs> Um, so we've talked about loads of things now and I don't want to keep going because that's already an hour of recording already. Yes. Um, we have so much more to talk about though. And I think people are going to be really interested in like watching this and hearing our experiences of what's, so. what's going on. I think there's so much we want to talk about, like the different languages, like the different things to study at university. Um, like the exercises that we can do uh, to prepare ourselves. Um, what else? There's loads of things, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, so many to talk about. We can talk about all the different tests. We can help you like prepare mentally and um, physically for yeah. like the training. I can talk about the, uh, the 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 astronauts that are currently now uh, in the yes. group and and what they did. Uh, so we can have also a better idea on on what uh, path we can follow for our studies. Yeah. Yeah, it's endless basically. Endless. And stuff. we can talk about we can also talk about all the new opportunities to go to space. I mean, how do we go to space uh, with the new capsules? The you know the commercial uh, yes. uh, missions, so SpaceX and and Boeing in the future, near future. And Blue Origin. And Blue Origin, yeah, okay, but for now it's it will not be uh, uh, to go really uh, uh, in orbit. Uh, it, it's going to be suborbital flights with uh, the Blue Shepard. So, oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, Blue Shepard is only only suborbital flight. And with the New Glenn, I think they haven't planned any manned mission. I know that they have. Um... I know they're preparing that they've got their own astronaut suits already. Yes, but I think it's it's linked to the Blue Moon uh, uh, oh, okay. program. You know the the lander. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the lander moon on lander. the moon. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there's plenty of talk to talk about. Let us know in the comment section below what you want us to talk about, and um, maybe we'll get up to um, making a video like this one, just casual talking, me and Lionel um, discussing about all the details of 
of different astronaut topics. Um, thank you so much for listening, and thank you, Lionel, for joining me on this. We won't. This is this is not going to be the last time we see you. We'll see him so. more often. Um, thank you very what much. What else? Um, yeah, we'll put loads of links to everything we spoke about down below as well. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave us a like, share and subscribe.